you, everybody, and welcome to another show of the girls. We are so excited here. We've been sitting having our cocktails here at Mia's. And, um, you know, did you ever wonder sometimes how you could sort of transform your look, mm -hmm. but you don't really want to take that real daring thing to maybe cut your hair or, you know, dye your hair or something? So the girls and I went on a little field trip. And when we come back, we're going to show you how we were transformed and how you could transform yourself in just minutes. And then later in the show, we're going to show you that now that you're looking kind of hot, maybe you have to think a little bit about some self-defense out there. Do you have a stalker? Do you know what a stalker is? We're going to show you some self-defense. And then later in the show, we'll talk about it. So stay with us. When we come back, we're going to show you how we've been transformed. Come on. What do you think, ladies? You, you like it? Yes, no. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we had so much fun. We went to John David and Helen's hair salon, and of course we were visiting Helen's Secrets Wig Boutique. And she did a very, very fine job with us. We had so much fun there. We enjoyed selecting wigs. It didn't take very long. And as you could see how long it took to transform us. And I'm thinking to myself, my goodness, if ever you want to change your hairdo and you're afraid to do it, if you have long hair and you want to go short, look at these wigs. Oh, beautiful. I mean, <laughs> you like them? You want to have more fun, right? <laughs> yes, they do. But now we're going to see how much fun the people with black hair have. Um, one thing I want to say about these wigs is they're so light on my head. I don't even realize that I have a wig on. Absolutely. Do you? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's no? perfect, like a glove. Just I like think that glove. Janine's wig just brings out her eyes. I think that Debbie is just, wow, her bike, her, Har her Harley's outside right now. Um, that's on my bucket list. That's on your, to ride a Harley? Yeah. A pink one. Yeah, sure. Fantastic. Um, and Jasmine, you're the one that I want. You are the one I want. <laughs> Sandy from Greece, come yeah. on, right? <laughs> or it looks like Charlie's Angels. Or Charlie's Angels. Okay. All right, now enough All of right. that. So now okay. a little bit more about these wigs, because I know everybody out there is asking the question. It's like, how expensive are these wigs? If you're going to get a wig, if it's going to be, you know, something that you're just going to opt to go get. The wig that I have on is like $127. Mm -hmm. So somewhere along the way it could shape off. And I know some of the reasons for having a wig. There are people who really need to have wigs. Unfortunately, if they're ill, if they take medication. Mm -hmm. right. With age, sometimes your hair starts thinning and you may want to get a wig. And as you can see, these wigs are not made from real hair. They're synthetic. And so one of the reasons for having a synthetic wig, as Helen pointed out to us, is that they're easier to maintain. They are much less expensive, sexy. and they really look real. I mean, look at, I just, I don't know. I did I some, it, it well, we were, you know, we always prepare for these shows, and we tape them on Tuesday nights, and Sunday, I was watching the Sunday morning show recently, and it said they were doing a study on women, so of course I grabbed my pen and paper and yeah, tell the kids, shh, 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 and they said, study on women with hair color, it's all about the psyche. They viewed the women, they took a woman who was bald, and then they viewed women with long hair, short hair, different colored hairs. They showed that the most intelligent that they found when they did the study, people pointed to the woman that was bald. And they connected it to the femininity. So if you're feminine, they were trying to tie it to that, of course, you have no brains. Uh, long, blonde, straight hair uh -oh. equaled narrow-minded. Wrong. Most That's people, me. most people want blonde hair, mm -hmm. and they're considered blondes have more fun. Mm -hmm. Redheads equaled being feisty. So again, with the yeah. psyche, they were looking at Redheads, the psyche. Redheads, good and bad. Well, why do yeah. they typecast everybody according to your hair color? They just did it's a like study. we're the same people underneath these wigs, and I don't think that I, I, hmm. I don't feel that much different. I think that it makes one. you feel different. Think about it. If you ever get your hair done and you're used to having it a certain color, and you have a picture in your mind how you want to look, how it makes you feel, and you get your hair done, 
And to you, it's just, it might look good to other people, but if you don't yeah. like it, you feel, you have to be comfortable. And it changes your whole, it changes your whole mood. Yeah. It changes yeah. your psyche. So listen, I had my hair blonde all my life, and just about a year ago, I dyed it bright red. Oh, wow. How'd that go over? I mean, I liked it. I thought it brought out my blue eyes. Right. But I guess people told me I looked ugly, so I changed Aww. it back. And, and you know what? I don't if think you could ever look ugly. No, it's ugly. okay. You don't have to pity me. I understand. <laughs> Well, did you like it? Because I think if you I mean, liked I thought it, I liked it, but I mean, well, I don't know. Well, the I, nice I thing know. is that you're able to change it. So that's the but good that's thing But that's the about thing. Her. If you have blonde hair or light hair and you're trying to go dark, okay, that's easy. But if you have dark hair and you're trying to go blonde, it was a mess, a and mess, well, a mess, a mess. Well, let's just think about it. Women, time. when you get up in the daytime and you get ready for the day, if your hair doesn't come right, it just seems like your whole day, you just oh, don't look right. Mm -hmm. So it's like the best accessory mm -hmm. that you have. And so the option with having a wig would be that, you know, if you really don't have good hair, right. you could have good hair. And think about going away on vacation. You go swimming, come out, blow your hair dry, oh, boom, put the wig on. My hair's a mess on vacation. I, your hair comes good. We always talk about this when you go to the ocean. I always right. have to put my hair in a ponytail with a cap because oh. my hair's curly and We have the hair that thick. grows. Stick and straight. as soon mine as you is. go outside mm -hmm. into that ocean weather, mine just turns to poop. But you know, right. I think you know someone who has made wigs completely like cool. I know what I, you're saying. Right, Kim from The Real Housewives. Mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta. She has blonde. She has blonde, beautiful hair, and you wouldn't even know it was a wig, but it's wigs, and she right. started her own wig line, and Smart. I mean, she has just completely come out of the woodwork mm -hmm. with wigs, and right. every time I look at her, I'm like, oh, I love her hair, but it's right. wig. You know what I mean? <laughs> now that we right. went to Helen's, though, you saw all the it's wigs. Easier. I yeah, never it's saw so, so many wigs in my life that she stocks there, mm -hmm. and you could go in the same day and walk out with a wig, or right. you could custom order your own color, and then when it comes in, of course, these weren't touched because these aren't ours to keep, but she'll cut it like to fit yeah, your head in don't any have to style. Be short no. or yeah. old ladyish. Yeah, they can exactly. be trendy and long and beautiful. Old ladyish. No, I'm saying they don't have to be old ladies. <laughs> you know kidding. what I mean? And I just have the to bust that, The other thing that people do is if they have, if because if you have thin hair and you want your hair long, but you know you can't grow it out, you can get extensions. You just have to watch who you go to and how you right. get them done right. because that can damage your sure. hair. At least this, boop, put it on, boop, take it off. Next day, boop, put it on. So And it's cool because I have a calic. I don't know if any of you guys oh, have calic. Have so calic. like if I try to do like a weird part, like I go, woo. And this, I got these nice little short bangs, and I can just pin them over, and it's no problem, right? And the study that was Sandy. shown for a <laughs> they're going to sing to each other on break. But uh, um, again, with the study, it just showed how the psyche works for women. Men just wake up, and they really don't even care about oh their hair. God. Women, like it's very know. important. My husband thinks about this black wig. He'll know later like, on wow, tonight. Wow. You can have like an alter ego. Like I feel like I should have like an accent, like. Well, Sandy? But not like, the way I feel in this wig is kind of like, I kind of feel momish. I kind of feel, not, not I mean, mom. I feel like I should be like, you want to get some real back and game, hop in the car. That's how I feel. But that's not a bad thing. That's just how I feel. And it comes out with a wig. How do you feel in your wig? I feel like Kate Goslin. Okay, that's an honest opinion. You feel like Kate Goslin. You feel sorry for you. Because like, she's like this, you know, all the time. Right. She's like, oh, my kids. Eight right. of them. Oh, my kids that's how me. I feel. Well, listen, now that we have the wigs and we look so hot, we really have to worry about something important, and that's self-defense. So when we come back, we're going to teach all of you women how to be aware and have some self-defense under your belt. Stay with us. It's a big topic, your safety. How many of you do feel safe walking the streets in your own community? Well, the girls felt it was necessary to take a self-defense course, and we did so, very interestingly enough, and we stopped by Nevin Baskin's Mountain Valley Family Martial Arts recently to learn how to protect ourselves because impairment of knowing how to protect yourself in a smart way and, you know, knowledge is powerful. So we did that. and. Uh, Let's go to our self-defense course with Nevin Baskin. We'll be right back. We're at Mountain Valley Family Martial Arts in the Churchill Mall, and we're at Sensi Nevin, and the girls and I are gonna get a little briefing on what it is to have 
self-defense for girls. Where do you draw the line when someone wants to be friendly? I mean, how friendly can you be without putting yourself in a vulnerable situation? Exactly, and that's key right there, is vulnerable situations. You know, having your stuff together, I think, is the best self-defense. You know, if you're perceived as somebody who's preoccupied, fumbling with things, you know, you're an easy target. And being that you, you know, even if you have a business, I think, in town, you get, you get to be a little bit of a, a mini celebrity. You know, like, I can't go anywhere without my sure. students Hey, Sensei sure. Nevin, and talking to me and, and things like that. And you're right, some people will come up to you and, and they don't know where to draw the line because you're considered a celebrity. They see you on TV, they feel like they know you. And because they know you, they can kind of go over a boundary where normally they might not. And 99% of the time, it's someone you know or someone who's studied you before, has talked to you, has interviewed you, they call it. And they've talked to you, seen what your kind of psyche is, to so see what you're psychologically like. Are you, are you reactive? If they say something to you and you get angry right back, you know, you're pretty much an easy target. In a fight, if you're not calm and cool and collected, you're not thinking rationally. And if you're not thinking rationally, you're going to make a mistake. So if we're fighting and you make a mistake, that's better for me. So, you know, somebody who's going to attack you, they'll look and see, well, is this an easy victim, an easy target? And if they're an easy target, you know, what do I do to get them to become more vulnerable and more you know, susceptible to an attack? Today, we're going to change our outfits. We'll throw you into some uh, martial art outfits. We'll get on the mats and we'll, we'll practice a couple different things. One will be stand-up fighting, you know, worrying, you know, understanding a little bit about getting your worries out of your minds of what it feels like to hit something, so we'll, we'll hit some things. And the second part will be on the ground. How do you get up? If you're on the ground, most people never think, how do, how do you get up off the ground? If you're laying on the ground, I'm over you, how do you stand up without getting hit? So what's the safest way to get up? Sound cool? Okay. Okay. All right. losing your what? Balance. Yeah, so if that moved, you'd go down. So you need a foundation. So as this happens, I want you to jump back with your feet like this now. So when you hear me blow the whistle, just watch me for a second. I want you to jump that back with your feet like this. Okay. You're gonna push something real heavy. This is gonna be so you don't fall over. You can pull yourself either direction. It's not to warn anybody. So you're gonna bend down like this. You're gonna run away real fast. Move to the side real fast, right? But now your legs are engaged. So rather than you being up on your heels, because up on her heels right now, see that? I can easily take her to the ground too, because if I would have kept going with it. And, are you okay? Yeah. And if I would have done this. <laughs> that's anybody, not just you, okay? Any yeah. of these guys too, does that make sense? Because I took her center. Oh, okay, good. Now when you do it though, look at me. Both legs are gonna be bent. Okay. Like a boxing stance. Yeah, and watch me now. See, Kristen, you did a good karate stance. Your back leg was straight. This right. is good for using your backhand to hit hard with. Okay. But now you're committed to your front leg being but you have good bend, bend both legs. So now you can shift your weight sideways. So to do that, just turn the mirror to me real fast. Turn this one real quick. So you're just gonna step back like this at an angle. And your knees are bent, your toes pit pointing in the same direction. From here you can duck, you can move sideways move backwards and you can rush in. That's, that's what we're gonna do next. Good. Take wide. So wide feet. Ready? Go! Stay down when you do it. Stay down when you do it. Move this over. Then your knees. There you go. That's it. I can back up. Okay, imagine you're trying to pick the bag up. Ready? Go! Better, better, much better. Now, if you hit the guy, he's 100 pounds heavier than you, and you come out, and as you're coming out, you take your leg and whack him in the side of the leg. That quadriceps is going to hurt really bad. It's like a dead leg. So from here, when you come in, come back out, hold on to them, and I want you to take your back leg and just fire it into the back. So hit first, come back. Yep. Yeah, first. exactly. So now we're trying to get away. It's going to come around, not straight up. Don't hit them in, the, don't hit them in between the legs. <clears throat> hit them in the side of the leg. Ready, go. Run. There we go. Good. One more time. Ready, go. Now step back and get your hands up. Palm strike. All right, one more time now, ready? So it's gonna come down. One, two, three. You can open your eyes now. Okay. 
exercise, you're gonna try to get up. Remember, you have to sit up and try to get up. Ready? Stuff. And that's why in martial arts you're learning all these things, like the kata and all the other stuff we're training, is that each movement has about five of those applications. But people don't know that, so they throw it away because they don't understand it. But you do now, you understand what it feels like. So you're developing the muscle memory so your body automatically can respond correctly with the right, right stance, the right, right twisting of your hips and stuff like that, and you can do it. You're more confident. So then you don't have to think about it. And again, thank you to Nevin Baskin for the self-defense course that we took 70 to 80 percent of most rapes are committed by people we know. Over 40 percent of most murders are committed by someone who knows the victim. That's startling to me, and it's startling um, to know that you know these people. We know them, mm -hmm. and you trust them. And I, I trust people pretty easily. Right. And that yeah. Well, that's what me. that's what that's what uh, Sensi Neppen was trying to get across to us right. in the course. He said you have to be aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. You have to let people know that you mean business. You have to be in control of your body. You can't panic and freeze. You have to know and rehearse what you would do. And there are certain words like no and are you following me mm -hmm. and things like that that you really have to project to a person if you do suspect because it'll let them know that the boundaries are set. Don't be talking on the phone mm -hmm. when you're walking. Don't be texting. So make mm -hmm. sure that you are vigilant of your surroundings. Yeah, well, protect yourself. And don't think if you carry a gun, it's going to protect you because somebody could turn that on you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk more about this, I'm sure, when we come back with this segment. Let's talk about Stay With Us. Thank you and welcome back to the girls and you know for people who are watching in the Hazelton area on channel 13 or you could go to ssptv.com and watch us online. Check us out on Facebook and you can email us any questions at all. We're always welcome to hear what everyone has to say, any comments. And that's the part of the show we're at right now. It's mm -hmm. called Let's Talk About. We should girls wear these like on, to talk. We should wear these for our shows and for the news. We yeah, could just get a different wig every night and mm -hmm. put them on. I like yeah. it. How about yeah. it? I know I'll be styling in it. I know one uh, member in the audience sent a question to me and they want to know how I like having black hair. Well, I've only had it for a few, you know, few minutes here now, but <laughs> um, I feel like the same person. I just feel like a little naked here because I'm mm -hmm. so used to having long hair. Um, I don't really can't even picture myself in it, so right. if I walk past the mirror, it looks really strange to me. It's almost like, right. who is that? So it takes a while to like identify. But of identify. course it makes your blue eyes pop, that's mm -hmm. for it sure. my blue right. eyes pop. Well, we'll see what else pops with this thing. But in the same token, Whoa. you have a question. Wow, I'm hot right I now. I do. Mayan says, is it okay to have sex with your man while you are on your period? Uh, no, come on, really? Is that, no, is that really what it no, says? No, it really does. I guess it's personal preference, really. I guess it's the preference of the, the guy. guy. I mean, I don't know. I, I heard Jasmine's quiet. Ooh. Jasmine's very quiet. I that's mean, I think that I say yes and he says no. So that's how I feel. I, heard I say that. sure. Listen, I heard a groan in the audience, though. I don't I like to say, I don't think that would be good. Well, I, I th that's what I'm saying. I think it's personal preference, but I've, I have heard that sex helps cramps. Really? From, I, from a girl, and the well, guy's I like, no. Well, I could say a lot of other things that help cramps that wouldn't be like I mean, I don't so know. Disgusting. I know. I take pampering. Like, hello, pampering, go to bed. <laughs> Wake up. I mean, you uh, feel like having sex on your roof. Oh, my God. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course. Sandy, come on. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, you said no. No. Oh, I said yes. Oh, oh my no. gosh. We're so different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my Lord. Okay, on. All right, the next question. Onward. Ugh. Okay, do you think it was, on a serious note here, do you think it was a good idea showing a picture promoting the carrying of a weapon or a gun in public? And I'm assuming you're talking about in the media, in print. And my opinion is, if it's legal to carry, that absolutely 110% it's okay to show the picture. Informing the public of what is going on. Um, you need to show it, you need to show it. No, I, I think it's a very touchy subject because 
people view guns in two different ways. People view guns as protection and people view guns as the, uh, the, the you know, the th a threat, a, a bad thing. A, you know, and I and I think it's a very touchy subject. Whether well, what's your opinion first of all the, the what, article? What's your opinion? Well, I have to tell you, you know, when I go out with Rich, my son's father, who is a cop, and I know that he's got that gun strapped to him, I feel so much really safer. No, I really I do. If you know I how to use really a gun, safe. and you in your informed, as uh, Nevin said, if you know how to right. use it and you're mm -hmm. educated. I don't carry mace because I honestly would have it used back oh, on myself. Man. Tell them right. about the mace. Oh, this one, Mother of the Listen Year. Listen to this. <laughs> when she left us okay, in the car when so we the were kids four were years old. Four years old, and I didn't leave you in the car. I would just car finished version. grocery shopping. Well, you were four. Let me tell the story. <laughs> so, get the kids back out to the parking lot, strap them in the seat belts in their car seats, which weren't even required at that time, as a lot of my friends will know. We're very good parents. So I put the kids in the car seats, and I open up the back of the Jeep, and I'm loading the groceries in. And all of a sudden, I hear Janine crying. I'm like, what the heck's going on? So I open the door, and I look in, and then her brother starts crying, Sammy, her twin brother. Anyhow, I look, and they had my mace that I had in, my, in the little console in between. And this one thought it was breath spray. Oh so she sprayed it on herself and of course I had to share with my brother. She had to share with her brother. She gives him a dose of it. Now the two of them are bawling, crying, screaming. So thank goodness this lady came by that I knew and I asked her to please stay with my kids. I ran back in the grocery store. So wait. Good mother and nurse that I am. She left I bought milk. Herself in the car. I did not. Ask a stranger to watch us. I I here. Go on. No, I left, I left you with a lady I knew. <laughs> Listen. So I went in and I, I got milk and I got plastic cups and I got napkins real quick and I just threw money at the lady and told no and I came back out and I was lavaging the eyes the mouth making them you know drink the milk whenever and then I got on the phone to the poison control and I found out of course through my training that I did the right thing but I mean could you imagine I was carrying mace to defend wow, myself that's well, and my well, kids story. just actually no, I, I have a story too because when I was young I actually had a, a man follow me home from school and it started this big thing so my parents made me carry mace well, I didn't know, and I was on the bus one day, and I decided I was going to spray my mace, because I thought I was cool, Your out arm. the bus window, no. right? No, wait, wait, wait. We're traveling, so the mace goes out the bus window, comes in the next bus window, and goes right into the eyes of one of my very good friends. Shut bus up. driver pulls over. I mean, it turned into this big deal, the ambulance on the side of the road. I mean, I got suspended from school. Oh, my Didn't God. you really? Oh, yeah, I like did. You That's funny. But I didn't do it on purpose. It wasn't like I was, like, trying to, like, you know. Like, Face my friend in the eyes. I just thought I was cool. I don't know. I was probably like ten or eleven, but I really you're seriously like my lot. parents are like, you need to carry this, and I'm like, oh, cool, mace. Okay, don't good. you think though, when you're carrying mace, and and that's I know we're talking about guns and knives, but I'd be like, hold on, don't attack me. Let me find my yeah, let me find yeah, my mace. Let me know how to open it. I mean, yeah, well, I would rather carry the gun. Did anybody ever use hairspray to yeah, kill an insect? Absolutely. Right? So you see the daddy long legger, no, 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 centipede, 10,000 million bajillion legs, and you just spray them with hairspray. So <laughs> I think hairspray could essentially yeah. work the same as mace. Yeah, and I always have hairspray. Spray, but so just spray the hairspray in the okay. person's face. But until you get out, so hence the self defense. You always have your hands, you have your mouth. So you're your going to be able to defense. scream, right. you're going to be able to run, and most of all, don't put yourself in this situation. No, but another thing right. that I have heard from, op well, officer, I think he's sergeant or lieutenant, I'm not exactly sure, and I apologize, John Leonard of the Hazleton Police Department, give them what they want. Right. Don't fight them for your purse. <laughs> Don't try and put, oh my goodness, this is my Louis Vuitton purse. <laughs> give it to them. Just give it to them. Don't fight them for it. Give it to them if because your want. life I know that, but if that's what they, if they just want your purse, you know, we'll give it to them because your life is worth a lot more than that purse or right. whatever's in that purse. It can be replaced. You can't. Could you imagine how disappointed they would be when they like took my purse home and they opened it up and it was just like a bunch of cover up sticks and like and pimple cream, tampons. tampons, and disposable tampons, right? Not reusable. Do you, do you have, have another question? Real quick, what do you do if someone confronts you with a gun or knife? Is screaming a good option? Screaming is a good option, yeah. but don't yell help. Yell fire. Okay, good. Why is that? Because Wait. if someone yells fire, people are more tend to help them. Oh, but if you yell they think it's help, part of and it's yeah, right, exactly. So they want to be. Okay. They they might be scared. They don't want to go near somewhere where there's danger. So some right. people might run away. But if they hear fire, people are more. Um, 
more apt easier to, to uh, help you. Very good. All right. Well, I, it looks like I'm going to need another drink. We're here at Mia's, and we want to thank them for hosting us tonight. Yes. We've had a very nice time here tonight. I'm sure our, our audience will applause to that Yay. fact and thank Mia's. We're hoping to come back again. We have a, uh, a lot of viewers who are watching us online and visiting the Facebook, and so join us on the next show. Don't forget to look to your local listings for the times and uh, just the wigs. Yeah, the wigs. We have to thank Helen, Helen from thank John you very David much. and Helen's um, hair salon, right? And her wig boutique. And if you want to get in touch with her, she's in West Hazelton and she's a doll. She made us feel so at ease, and I think that she did a real good job suiting us with these wigs. I think so. Okay, so thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time on the girls.